Hi, my name is Sergio Nava, pastor of Living Word Church here in Garland, Texas. I ask that as you watch this video, you will remain open to what the Holy Spirit will want to speak into your life. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with me one more time. And I want you to welcome Deacon Joyce Silverman. They're going to bless your socks off if you're wearing one. If not, your pantyhose. God bless y'all. Tell them how much you love them. Everybody, just praise him. Lift your hands to him. Father, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, the thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You're everything we need. Glory to God. You're our God, our king, our master. Everything, our healer, our savior. And we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You can all be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start off with something a little semi-fast. Can I, can I change the number on that? The one we practiced was number one. In a moment, I'm going to have you do song number six. I just feel like we need to clap and shout and praise God. That praise and worship was superb yes. as usual. Glory to God. You've got an anointed worship team. Hallelujah. This song... Scooby Dooby Doo, am I on now? Can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Believers in Baltimore, Maryland area, who we met that got so excited that Jewish people were finding Jesus. They wrote this song, this Jewish song, the middle verse is totally in Hebrew. And it says, uh, well, since you're an interpreter, you can interpret it for them, can't you? I did it. <laughs> I'm just joking. It says, bless the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the Holy Ghost, and bless him and receive Jesus, O Israel. How many brought your hand clappers today? Hallelujah. Come forth, my people. Song number six. Praise God. Come forth, my people, with singing and dancing. Come forth, my people, with hearts full of joy. Come forth, my people, with trumpets and cymbals. Come forth, my people, in praise of the Lord. Go forth, my people, with singing and dancing. Go forth, my people, and tell a little more monitor that Jesus died and was risen in glory. Go forth, my people, in praise of the Lord. Baruch Hashem HaMashiach Yeshua, Baruch Adonai Melech HaOlam, Baruch Hashem HaRuach HaKodesh, Baruch Yeshua, O Yisrael. Come forth, my people, with singing and dancing. Come forth, my people, with uplifted hearts. Come forth, my people, with songs of thanksgiving. Come forth, my people, in praise of the Lord. La, 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 la
and uh, playing piano and singing since she was about six and a half. Joy, why don't you greet these wonderful people? We're so good to be with you today. Good to be in his presence, amen? amen. Scripture says when we worship him, he comes down and inhabits our praises. Hallelujah. He sits down among us, and he's here today. Hallelujah. He wants to meet all of our needs. You know, he got in the boat, or he was in the boat with the disciples when the storm came. I don't know what you're in the middle of today, but he's there with you. Amen. He's the peace speaker. The script of the Lord has been bringing to my heart the last couple of days. Psalm 119, 165 is great peace. Can you say great peace? Great peace to those who love thy law and nothing shall offend you. The message Bible says, and there will be no stumbling in the dark. Amen. Because he brings the light. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. This song is taken from Psalm 105, written by a minister on Long Island, New York. He wanted to write a Hebraic song taken right from Scripture. How many love to come? Let's sing unto the Lord and give him glory. This is song number one. Oh, come, let's sing unto the Lord. Psalm 105. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Well, let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise to Him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King. Above Him there are no other gods. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Well, let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to Him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King. Above Him there are no other gods. No other gods. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful voice to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Well, glory to God. I'm going to be speaking today on the Feast of Tabernacles. You're going to hear some things that are Things you've never had a chance to hear before. How the Feast of Tabernacles pointed to the birth of the Messiah Jesus. Things in Jewish history and and, and in Scripture the Christians haven't had a chance to see. Hallelujah. There's one part in there. I'm going to give you a little teaser. How many like those little teasers? They come together in the temple during the Feast of Tabernacles. lasts about eight days. They're worshiping and they're shouting. And on that seventh day, when they're in the midst of shouting and praising God, 
the man named Jesus Christ stood up and stopped everything and gave a speech, something that was very rare at that time because the Feast of Tabernacles pointed to him and he wanted them to see it. And you'll see how the Feast of Tabernacles also deals with the birth of the Messiah Jesus. They all came together. It was also called, I'll be teaching the Feast of the Ingathering. Gathering. It was the last of seven feasts. The harvest is in. They're rejoicing. The biggest buffet in the history of mankind. They're praising God in the temple. They're feasting morning and night. Glory to God. Everybody from all over Israel tried to make it. This song deals with people coming forth and praising God, written by a Jewish believer in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Praise God. It's the Messianic Jewish hallelujah song. Glory to God. You're going to love it. Let this bless you. Coming back soon. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to this verse. We're seeing it happen today. Unto Abraham's land he will draw them as a shepherd gathers his sheep for he Sing hallelujah. Sing it with us, everyone. Bring me up with just a touch of the monitor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship him with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it softly one time to the Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise. You're our supply. You're our healer, our Savior. You're the God who blesses us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We magnify your holy name, Lord. 
And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and the thanksgiving. We praise your holy name. Sing it out, everyone with us. If you feel that, lift a hand and praise him. song and sing something else if you need a miracle this isn't everybody but you know you are this doesn't mean you're backslid not a fellowship with God or any of those things it means the miracle worker is on the scene my God is here my God is here come on up here sister hallelujah hallelujah Brother, come on up, stand behind her. Don't place your hands on her, just toward her. Don't call the miracle, the miracle. Even when you don't see it in the natural, the Lord would say, my miracle power is now. My presence is here now. Even where there seems to be confusion. I erase that confusion with my peace that passes understanding now Jesus name Jesus name sister there's no difference there's no distance in the spirit realm watch God work Jesus name Jesus name come on lift a hand toward heaven lift a hand toward heaven hallelujah Miracle, miracle, miracle. You, you can keep the volume the same. I'll work with it. Dot, dot, call. There's one or two others. You're here. You just need a miracle. If that's you, just stand right where you're at. Doesn't mean, uh, doesn't mean you don't know how to pray or anything like that. Hallelujah. Don't wait for somebody else. There's a miracle in this house right now. There's a mir If you need a miracle in your family, on your job, your finances, your circumstances. Glory to God. The miracle worker is he. Come on up. Come on up, both you ladies. Stand right up there. Stand next to her. The presence of God has already gone before you, sister. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Ghost has already gone before you. He had to come against the oppression and lies of the enemy. In the name above every name, that masterful name of Jesus. And watch the obstacles fall. He because for the enemy is a liar. He's the father of lies. My presence is now. Your miracle. Hear the Lord saying is now. Go ahead and praise him. Jesus name stretch a hand towards her one time 
Jesus' name. And sister, there's a healing. There's a healing from past hurts, pains, rejection. The enemy has tried to tear apart your family. The enemy has tried to take things from you, people and others that were close to you. The enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, life more abundantly. Receive, receive Jesus' name. Mighty healing, mighty healing. That's it. That's the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name. Oh, just praise him at your seats. Just praise the Lord. This is what Pentecost is all about. Hallelujah. Mighty healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's all right. We're just letting the Holy Ghost flow. Just like the pastor had them play because the Holy Ghost was moving. Oh, what an anointing. God, da, da, it was God's appointment that you were here this morning. Jesus' name. Da, da, ka, da. When it's the Holy Ghost, you don't have to force anything. Just let them flow. Stand in behind my sister here. Go ahead, just right there. God, da, 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 ka, da. Your miracle in your family, in your life, in your finances. Miracle. Jesus' name. Jesus name that's it it's the Holy Ghost he's our God sing with me a prayer he's our God I love to go to these churches, Pastor, where you allow the flow of the Spirit. Praise God. I heard this in my heart. I sense there's one more that needs to come forward. Praise God. You didn't come forward when the others did, but you feel like now you saw the moving of the Holy Ghost. You feel like you should have come forward. If that's you, you just stand right where you're at. You need a miracle. This doesn't mean you're a sinner. It doesn't mean you're a backslid or any of those things necessarily. You don't know how to pray or lack faith or whatever. Your miracles now. Is there someone else? Just go ahead. Lift, stand up right where you're at. Praise God. 
is the name above all names. Name above all names. Amen. How many believe he's still the name above all names? Lift that hand up. Lift those hands. Just praise him. He's so worthy to be praised. Praise God. Whew. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 God is good. God is good. Joy, we'll just save that song for later. I just feel like I should preach right now. And I forgot I got the lavalier on. Hallelujah. Is it unmuted now? Test, one, two. Can you hear me now? You can? I'm on? Hallelujah. Oh, now I hear me. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, the Lord's wonderful. Joy, we'll just save that song for later. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe we're in the presence of the miracle worker today? He's still a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, God's not done yet. We got a lot of time. See, I was talking with Pastor before service. He said, because the Cowboys aren't playing, don't let them out till at least three. <laughs> How many knows he didn't say that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister, God's got greater things for you. You hear me what I'm telling you? He's got greater things for you. You've got a heart for Him. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Brother, this is for you and your wonderful lady. Praise God. I am your supply, and I see your heart. I am your supply. And I've watched you go the extra mile, physically, going where one was needed, planting seed. Lord, what more can I do? You've said this is only the beginning. Continue. Continue to go that extra mile. Continue to plant those seeds and praise me. Praise me in advance. Praise me during. Praise me through it all. And watch me work. This is the confirmation you've needed. I am your supply. I will never let you down, says the Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lift a hand toward heaven. I've been in prayer and glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Nikki, come on up here a second. Adam also. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead. You can join hands. You want to stand in behind them? Only the beginning. I heard this as I walked down the aisle this morning as I walked in and praise and worship was being practiced. It was like something just spoke strong in my ear. It's a new day, a new day of greater things. Not only is my strength there, not only is my peace there, Watch me work, says the Lord. Dita ko, tata ka, fresh doors of blessing. Tata ko, taka taka, dreams unfolding before your eyes. A fresh new day. 
only the beginning of greater things. And to a greater level. I'm hearing these words to a greater level. Watch me use those talents as you've given them afresh to me again. To a greater level. The Lord says, my child, don't be afraid. When, when that moment comes, it won't happen all the time. You'll know during a song, during a chorus, somebody's out there being healed. Somebody's out there being set free. Just voice it out. They don't have to come to the front. It's up to them to respond. And as they do, they will be set free. My healing will flow. I hear the Lord saying he's taking you both to the next level. Let him do the work. Strength, strength, strength. I'm the God that healeth thee emotionally every way. Jesus' name, strength. Strength and wisdom, wisdom. Lift a hand to him. Let's sing this chorus. And I give glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. And I give glory to your name. Oh, I give glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Dasha, what a beautiful flow of the Holy Ghost here this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Da da ka sha da 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 ka. Khan da 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 ko da 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 ko da 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 ko. Ko da 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 da. Pastor, this is for you and Mrs. Pastor. Expect that vision to unfold as it already has begun before your eyes. Whew, there's a fresh, fresh presence of the Holy Ghost here. Fresh presence. Just beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 It's fun to speak in tongues because that's in every language. Praise God. This is the last day of all seven feasts. This last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. They called it through in Scripture and throughout all of Judaism through the centuries, through thousands of years. The last, that great day of the feast. The fall feasts start about, oh, somewhere in September. And with our calendar, it goes differently. Sometimes it can start at, uh, towards the middle of the end of September and go through October. This year they started early because of the Jewish calendar and how it relates to ours. There's the first four feasts that talk about Christ's birth, death, resurrection, Pentecost. Then comes a long summer period. Now, on the, spiritual, on the spiritual calendar, we're in that long summer period because the first fall feast is Rosh Hashanah. It parallels the rapture. The scriptures are just overflowing. Ten days later is the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, which parallels the second coming. Five days after Yom Kippur, that holiest day of the year, the day after Yom Kippur, they start building booths. The Hebrew name for this celebration, Feast of Tabernacles, is Sukkot. 
a sukkah is one of those booths, actually a little like shelters, not booths, a little like shelters. And they use palm branches and fruit branches and things like this to cover it. And they eat at least one. And so when Feast of Tabernacles comes, they eat at least one meal a day out there with the family and with friends. At the Jaffa Gate in Israel, they have a giant one for everyone that passes by. Hallelujah. The prophetic picture becomes clear. God's wanted them to celebrate the fact He provided for them 40 years in the desert. Hallelujah. And that's why they build those little shelters. Praise God. They say Psalm 91, the first two verses, uh, just completely captures the essence of the feast. I'm doing a series. I'm working on a series now on El Shaddai because there's things the churches don't get a chance to hear. I like to bring out the Jewish roots of the gospel because my father's family is Orthodox Jewish that, that uh, as Jewish believer, churches don't get a chance to hear. This doesn't mean I know more and I'm a smart aleck because I'm a Jewish believer. I had to learn born again, spirit filled, and church language from scratch when I first hit an Assembly of God church. First born again church, I, uh, uh, well, at least spirit filled church I was ever in. Never heard of the Assemblies of God until almost a year after I was saved. Born and raised right outside of Pittsburgh. And this is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, that makes me a Steeler fan. And they are playing today, by the way. But anyway. <laughs> I had to learn terms like born again and spirit-filled and fellowship. We're the only ones who use, you know, the church people, born again people use the word fellowship. I thought they were talking about a boat ride. So we're all going on a fellowship. I had no idea what they were talking about. I like to tell people I'm the one when I first heard the term epistles, thought maybe they were the apostles' wives. <laughs> now I want you to imagine hearing all these words for the first time in your life. Now I have a chance to bring back those Jewish roots. And I say that because over 1,500 times God's name is used and the different names of God in the Psalms. But only twice is El Shaddai ever used. Now, in the Old Testament, and I learned this from Hebrew scholars, it's either El Shaddai or Shaddai. They mean the same thing. The name is so holy the Orthodox Jews won't say it. They'll pronounce it Shekai. They feel like it's too holy to use. It always means that, you know, the God is more than enough, but it always means an overwhelming victory and protection. Now, Psalm 91, they believe, was written by Moses. during the four Why do they say that? The Hebrew and the cases that are used are almost exact to that in Torah, the Pentateuch. It's unlike, there's one or two Psalms, they believe Psalm 90 was written by Moses also because the Hebrew begins to change and look exactly like Torah and it talks about things in the desert. The first verse says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I have trust. They trusted God for 40 years, the days in the desert. Glory to God, I don't have time to, uh, Psalm 105, when it talks about how they marched through the desert, how many have read the scripture where it says they left with silver and gold? The Hebrew brings out the connotation, it was overflowing. They had so much silver and gold, they couldn't even hold on to it all and carry it. And in that same verse, it says, not one of them was feeble. How many remember that verse? Again, the Hebrew connotates the overflow. Overflow healing. People say, well, what do you base, base that on? Not only did they never get a headache or an ingrown toenail or a rash or anything, their clothes didn't wear out for 40 years. The Hebrews talk about overflow healing. Glory to God. How many believe we serve the same God? Amen. How many believe we live in a better covenant than the Israelites did Amen. in the Old Testament? How many believe He wants that for us? Amen. Praise God. This was one of three occasions. I've got all my notes all handwritten out right here because I want to get all this right. One of three occasions, the other being Passover and Pentecost, where every Jewish male, 12 years old and up, had to come to the temple and present himself before God. And they always came with offerings and gifts. Everybody say amen. amen. 
when you hear offerings, get excited. Praise God. Because Deuteronomy 16, 16 says they won't appear before me empty-handed. It was agricultural in nature. During Rosh Hashanah, they brought in the greatest harvest of the year. When they walked with God, the harvest was so overflowing, they had more than they could ever eat. It was a time to reach Gentiles during these three fall feasts because leaders of the Gentile nations would send representatives to find out from this Jewish nation, how come you're so rich? How come you have so much wheat and grain? How do you have this and we don't? Praise God, they told them about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Glory. People need to be coming up and saying to us, how come you're so happy? Yeah. Amen. Woo! You always act blessed. Right. Praise God. Yeah. This is time for the overflow blessing. Yes. Yes. Overflow blessing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I teach in different places. One of them is a uh, sales place where I saw uh, Nikki not too long ago. They asked me to come and teach and help them out when I'm in town. And uh, all of a sudden, and I had been thinking, Pastor, you know, I'd like to get one or two more suits. Praise God. Amen. One of the owners comes up to me and says, Deke, this is your lucky day. I thought, what happened? He said, my father recently passed away, and he had some of the richest suits you can get. Wow. He used to like to, this is what he told me, he used to like to spend $1,000 or more on his suits. Amen. Handmade, they have his name ingrained in there. And if it wasn't to his liking, he gave it back to the tailors and said, do it right. He said, I'm just going to give them all to you. Wow. 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 Two of them are tuxes. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Yeah. The one camel hair is like silk. He had it special made from a uh, special draw. It was just amazing. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? I didn't even have to pray about it. How many have ever had those things where you just knew this is uh, the overflow? Now I have more than what I think I could use. Glory to God. Harvest came in from the fields. They wanted the Gentile nations to know we're blessed because we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's called the Feast of the End Gathering. It was Israel's Thanksgiving. Now why do I bring that up? Research it. Get ready for this. When the pilgrims joined with the Native Americans, and they had what you and I call Thanksgiving. They patterned it after the Feast of Tabernacles. These were holy people. They wanted it done right. They didn't have, or maybe they did, but they didn't want to slaughter lambs at the time. They wanted the Native Americans to realize we're joining with you. They never heard or saw turkeys until they came to North America. They never existed in the uh, Eastern world, only in the Western world, only in the Western Hemisphere. So they said, we will eat your native bird to show we want to be one with you. Hallelujah. The, the celebration is so fantastic. Joy and I had a chance to celebrate over there with Messianic believers who were doing just a celebration during that time and singing and, and marching through the city. The rabbis have said, he who has not been to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles does not know what true rejoicing is. Let me get back to the spiritual significance. God protected them for 40 years in the desert. He was there everything. There was no food in the desert. Manna came from heaven. Researchers said it sounded sweet. The Orthodox Jews will tell you this. It tasted like what you wanted it to. You wanted it to taste like a ribeye? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll bet you there was also some steak sauce from heaven on that baby. Glory to God. There were times, th the, uh, there were streams that were bitter. He turned them sweet. The Lord did. There were times in the desert, there weren't any streams for hundreds of miles. He brought fresh water out of a rock. Now we know that. But he was there every supply. When they wanted the meat, he blew in quails. We serve a miracle working God. God wanted them now for the last 3,500 years to celebrate this significant feast, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And I'm going to be moving along quickly because you got to hear what happened. Now, you had to do two things. You're going to love this. 
you had to praise God three times in the temple. And many times they were in there for hours just shouting and praising. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Now the second one might be a little tougher, Pastor. You had to feast. Oh. Telling you. I know church people would have a hard time with that. It, and that's the truth. All the harvest is in. There's more food than you can imagine. The first day and the last day, it was mandated no one worked. No one was allowed to work. Usually that took place the whole week. You didn't work. You praised God and you feasted. All your bills were paid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, at a certain hour in the temple when they were praising God, for the first six days, there would be a high, there would be a high priest standing there. And when he gave one of the priests his signal, the priest had a vessel a huge like vase that held gallons of water. He would race down to the pool of Siloam. How many are familiar with that one? The one the angel would trouble, somebody would be healed. They felt like that was like holy water. And he would fill it up and he'd come up to the temple and at the foot of the altar for the first six days, because the seventh day something special happens, he would pour it at the foot of the altar. There would be pipes, irrigation that flowed out to the pool of Kedron, the brook of Kedron, excuse me, spread it all over Jerusalem. And they would shout and praise God. But it all culminated on the seventh day. This is what everyone was waiting for. On the seventh day, when the high priest, they're already shouting, they know what's going to happen. He tells that priest, grab that vessel and go head down. And he would fill it with water and come back up. When he came back up at the other side of the altar was another priest with a duplicate golden vessel filled with gallons of the latest fermented wine, not to be drank, but to be used for this purpose. Together they would pour the water and wine at the foot of the altar. It would flow into the brook of Kedron, and they would shout and praise God. Now listen to how they praised God. The high priest would lead them in it. They would thank God for someday sending King Messiah to rule over us. And they would thank God and praise Him. First they would cry out, Lord, we're thirsty. Feed our crops this next year like you did this year. And let that rain fall upon the Gentiles also. And then they would say, Lord, we're thirsty spiritually. Pour your spirit upon us. We're thirsty, Lord. We want to drink the fruit of your spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. Get ready. Turn to the Gospel of John, the seventh chapter. This last day was then and today and it's since the time of Moses called that great day of the feast. It was the last and great day of the feast. Hallelujah. Whew. In Hebrew it's called Hoshana Rabbah, the day of great Hosanna. The great day of great, praise God, celebration. Now this is going to sound like a jet plane. John 7, 37. And you're like that. You're ready to take off. In the midst of all this celebration and shouting, Jesus gave a speech. Verse 37, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. They're crying out, Lord, I'm thirsty. Verse 38, He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But watch this. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In the midst of all this shouting, Jesus stood up and said, Don't you understand? I'm Him. You're calling for King Messiah. I'm here. You're saying you're thirsty. Believe in me because the days come. I'm going to be glorified and risen from the dead. And the Father will have me send the Spirit out upon everybody. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many does that really come, come alive to you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
praise God amidst all the splendor and brilliant lights. Jesus stood to proclaim, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. This feast also represents the Lord's shelter in the world to come. His great tabernacle to exist in Jerusalem in the kingdom age. All the world will come every year, both Jew and Gentile. Do you remember I said I would bring about how it connects with the birth of Christ? How many want to hear that? Oh, it's a shame I'm running out of time, but you would have really enjoyed it. Uh, we Jewish believers are jokers. Glory to God. How many have heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Okay, I'm prefacing it with this. How many have heard of the people who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Essenes? Are you all with me? Let me give you a quick history about them. You need to look them up. E-S-S-E-N-E-S. About 200 years before Christ was born, a group of Jewish people called Essenes skipped off, went out into the desert and formed their own community. They did their own irrigation. They dug a path from the Red Sea that would flow right into their desert community. Most amazing. They beautified the caves. They had holy places to worship, everything like this. About 150 years before... Now, these people were alive during the time of Christ. Their ancestors, they stayed that way. About 8 to 10% of them stayed in Jerusalem. When you visit Jerusalem... They will show you that where the Last Supper was, that was the area of Jerusalem owned by the Essenes. They were very messianic. The Essenes not just wrote the scriptures. They're the one that wrote uh, the Old Testament scriptures and hid them away and it wasn't found until before Christ was born. They hid them away, the Old Testament scriptures in the ancient Hebrew, and they were found in 1948. Amazing. Matched up with what we had today. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Long story short, by the way, I mentioned they were around during the days of Jesus. Am I, am I right? Yes. They wrote a meeting with Jesus. Yes. It is believed they, Jesus met with them. Before they found the writings, they believed Jesus met with them during His 40 days in the wilderness. They were very messianic. John the Baptist at one time, they believed, was part of the Essenes. He dressed like them when his diet was like them. And their message for 2,000 or 200 years was... Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God had John the Baptist learn from them. I said all that to say this. The Essenes believed, they knew, this is 150 years before Christ was born, when the Messiah would be born. Are you ready? Amen. On that last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, something else takes place that I forgot to mention. It is one of only two days out of the year where they light up every candle, torch, lantern, candelabra in the entire temple. The temple was huge, titanic. Everything was lit up. Every family tried to bring in at least one torch or lantern representing them on that day. They lit up the city, lit up the temple. From the distance it looked like the whole entire city was on fire. It was so beautiful. The Essenes believed the Messiah would be born on that day when they lit up the temple and the city. Now, just for argument's sake, let's say maybe they're right. Y'all with me? How many believe we serve a perfect God? Grab a hold of this. So let's say the gestation period that Mary had with Jesus was a perfect 40 weeks. You all with me? You go back from the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, 40 weeks to the day, you land on the only other day of the year where they lit up the temple, lit up the city. That was the last day of an extra feast, a feast Jesus celebrated in John the 10th chapter. In His day, it was called the Feast of Dedication. Originally, it was called the Festival of Lights. You and I know it by its more modern term, Hanukkah. So if the Essenes were right, Jesus would have been conceived on the last day of Hanukkah, the, only, the first day of the year where they lit up the temple in the city and would have been born exactly 40 weeks later on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the only other day they lighted up the city. Now, because the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D., we don't have the exact dates for the feasts. Like this is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, 
It could be two weeks in any direction at least. We don't know. Are you all with me? So we don't know when Jesus is coming back, we know all this. So continue to celebrate December 25th. Y'all with me? Amen. I just wanted to show you the highlights. Lift a hand toward heaven and praise Him right now. God is so good. Lord, we magnify Your holy name. We give You the glory, the honor, the praise, the thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You're our God and our King and our Master and our everything. We magnify your holy name, your holy name. We called out for miracles. I believe in healing. I believe, whew, there's a healing touch in here now. I was about to call out for salvation. The moment I said that, there's a healing flow. Arthritic symptoms are leaving right now. Bones are being strengthened. Listen to me. Uh, it might not have been called arthritis. Stiffness in your joints, pain, swelling. If that's you, stand up right now in the name of Jesus. There's a healing flow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sister, I specifically saw that healing come upon you just as I stepped down. Strengthen my sister from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. You've taken her from these bore sicknesses. By the stripes of Jesus, she's been healed. Hallelujah, healing, healing. Just do what you couldn't do before. There's healing right now. Just do what you couldn't do before. Migraine headaches in the name of Jesus are being healed. If that's you, just stand right where you're at. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Others who need healing, just lift a hand toward heaven. Taking their infirmities, Lord, I thank you for their sicknesses. By the stripes of Jesus, they've been healed. You can all be seated just for a moment. A little softer joy, praise God. You can all be seated, praise God. The greatest miracle is still salvation, amen? And I'm not zeroing in on anybody. I like to ask this every place I go. If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're saved, if you're here and you're not sure that if Jesus were to come back before this service ends, you'd go to be with him. If you're not sure you're right with God, if you're not sure you're saved and you want to be sure, raise your hand so I can see it. Is there anybody? Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's all lift a hand and praise Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have my wife do this special song during the love offering, if that's okay. The Hakadosh song. Glory to God. How many believe in miracles? How many believe missions is still alive and well? How many remember from the past, my wife and I are supporting three missions in Israel, a congregation in Haifa. We are supporting as best we can the rabbi and his wife. Born again, spirit filled. We worked with them in the late 70s, Jewish ministry on Long Island, New York. And uh, there's a missions work in Jerusalem that's feeding the poor, clothing the, those that need it, things like this. And, of course, the latest one, the first born-again Israeli foster home orphanage. Let that touch your heart. We still need a miracle to see it happen. We've had this the last couple of times. I want to show it to you again. It's called the Quick Scan Bible. It's King James, but as you can see, it highlights the meat of the verses. How many have ever needed to look up something quick? You'd be reading the Gospels through, it estimates, in about 9 to 10 minutes each Gospel. It doesn't say the rest isn't inspired. It just gives you the meat of the verse all the way through. It's hardback. It'll last forever. I know the owner of the publishing rights to this. Glory to God. We go by the honor system. We've said uh, for the last couple of years, those that give $100 or more, one of these is yours. But if you can't afford $100, we can still take $80 and have enough to send it overseas to the missions. This is helping us help Israel. How many believe in these last days they deserve a chance to hear about Jesus? Praise God. Pastor, let me give it to you. Glory to God. And my wife will sing that special song. Oh, by the way, I'll sign it and put a scripture in it. God has me give you. We'll be in the back. We'll go by the honor system. Just come back and let us know. Praise the Lord. I want you to stand with me, please. How many of you were blessed this morning? God is in the house. You can feel his presence. 
Brother Deacon, I was listening to the Holy Spirit. I pray the Lord has touched and blessed your heart through this message. If after viewing this video, you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to invite you to say this short prayer with me. Join me right now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you at this very moment, God, that everyone that is viewing this, this video, God, that you will come into their life, God. Touch them, God, and change them, Lord. Mold them into your image. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to come and touch me, God. Restore my life, God. Touch me in a different way, God. I ask you, God, that you will change me, God. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. I would also like to invite you to one of our upcoming services to experience the power of God personally. May the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you. Thank you.